Hey guys, back again. Horror movie number 12 on October 12th. And I watched this movie the other night for the first time. This movie is Child's Play 2. And, um, yeah, I see the trailer is not, doesn't really look that great. I need to make it a little bit darker, but oh well. We're just going to go with it. I don't care. I need to get this done uh, within the time frame. I'm going to be so relieved when all this is over and I can just go back to recording whenever so I set the standard for myself and I almost thought the internet wasn't going to work tonight I was like uh oh I was like well that's kind of a good excuse so if it doesn't doesn't work and can't do much about it I could upload something from my phone maybe but anyway I gotta say that uh, child's play scared me it terrified me as a child just like many other kids I watched it when I was really young and I had this babysitter that always watched me, and her parents had a pretty big movie collection because they copied movies on VHS. They had, like, a recorder, and so they recorded them. So they kept all of them. They had, like, a big library. So that was cool. Um, but anyway, I didn't watch it from them. But I remember my babysitter always telling me about Chucky and, like, how you should see Child's Play, and it's about a killer doll. And I was always, like, intrigued but, like, frightened by it. But my cousins actually had the film on VHS, and I watched it with my cousins, or at my cousin's place, and yeah, it, it pretty much left a scar on me after I saw that. I was always thinking that Chucky was going to be under my bed at night trying to stab me or whatever, and uh, it, ironically, at the end of that Chucky, the Child's Play video on VHS, they had like Pee Wee's big movie or whatever, so Pee Wee Herman came on after that, and I was like, oh, what a relief, like, went from, like, night to day, it was so weird of a combination, but, yeah, I'll always remember that, so it's kind of a special movie to me, I've watched it, you know, since, I've gotten older, and it really, uh, it's cheesy, it's corny, you know, it's not really the greatest movie, but it's still kind of special to me. Now, through time, as an adult, I've seen the Bride of Chucky, I think. I don't really remember a whole lot about it, but, you know, we have Chucky, the new woman introduced, and Chucky has, like, the scarred-up face, so they changed his look, which they try to make him look cooler and different, like, maybe more meaner in a way, but I still think that I kind of like the regular Chucky, the old, good-looking doll. Um, and then I've seen The Cult of Chucky on Netflix, and I really liked that one because... It had some surrealism to it, and it had it takes place in like a mental asylum, basically, and there was like multiple Chucky dolls there, and I remember like a Chucky, like a giant Chucky doll, and there was weird stuff that like you don't know what's real and what isn't because there, it was like inside people's heads. I guess that the female actress that was young in this movie, Child's Play 2, played in The Cold of Chucky, which is pretty cool. I mean, I don't remember if she was one of the main characters. She probably was. Uh, so she came back later in life to make another Chucky movie. That's cool. I've heard that The Curse of Chucky is pretty good, and they try to make him scary again. But I've also seen the Chucky, the Child's Play remake recently that makes him more of a kind of robot gone bad. They changed the story, which I thought it was all right. I didn't think it was terrible for a remake. It was different. It was fresh. It wasn't really great, but it wasn't bad either. I don't know if any of these Child's Play movies are really, really great. But I'm going to talk about the first one and compare it probably with the second one. Because this is like a direct sequel. It has the original Andy, the kid, um, who Chucky is trying to get into his body, basically. Um, you know, Chucky... In the original Child's Play, there was, like, basically a deranged killer who was, like, into voodoo and stuff, and there was, like, a shootout in a toy store, and before he died, like, he put his soul, like, into a doll, basically, so he would stay alive. But, like, if he if the soul stays in the doll too long, then, like, the he becomes human in the doll, and the doll can die, and he needs to, like, transfer his soul into, like, a young kid, basically. Pretty crazy, bizarre story, but it's kind of cool, it's unique. And it's definitely corny, but basically at the end of Child's Play, they think that they kill the doll, and then somehow in Child's Play 2, like, he's all of a sudden, you know, he's brought back. And I haven't seen the third one, 
So um, the third one's supposed to be another direct sequel with the, the same Andy kid, but I've heard that it's even lower than the second one. Some people said the second one kind of rivals the first one. In some ways, some people like the second one better than the first one or whatever. So, again, I think there's seven movies in total, maybe eight with the new one. I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to think about it. But I got this DVD collection recently, and that's why I'm watching this. And it has Child's Play 2 and 3 and The Bride of Chucky and The Seed of Chucky, which basically everybody says is the worst one. So there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and then there's the Cult of Chucky, the Curse of Chucky, and the new Child's Play. So I guess that there's eight in total. And I've seen the first one when I was younger, and, and again, since I've been an adult, but I've seen the first one, I've seen The Bride of Chucky, I've seen The Cult of Chucky, and I've seen the remake. So, I know that's confusing, but I still have a lot, you know, like half of them to watch, is what I'm saying. But I finally watched the second one. And I want to say, too, that how terrified of it I was when I was a kid. One time, uh, another cousin and my dad, um, it was going to be on TV, like Child's Play 3 was going to be on TV, I think. Um, and I was like, I'm going to sit, like, we're going to watch this or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm going to sit through this and I'm going to do it. And, like, when it came on, I was like, oh, no, like, I can't do it. Shut it off, shut it off. And, like, I made him shut it off, basically. I was such a wuss. I'll never forget that. Like, I, I can't help it. It terrified me. And it used to terrify me just walking by Chucky on the cover, like, in the video stores or at the gas station. And I think it was Child's Play too. It would have him, like, right on the cover, and it just scared the hell out of me. I didn't even want to look at it. And, you know, there are dolls that look like the Chucky dolls. I don't know if they were called, like, Buddy, My Buddy or whatever. But one of my friends had one of those. And I think that we might have burned it alive or <laughs> we might have killed it or something. I don't know. But, yeah, that's, uh, as a kid, it's creepy, but... So the second one, for one thing, it does have the woman who's in Twin Peaks who plays as Laura Palmer's mom. And I don't know this actress's name, but, you know, I know David Lynch has used her. She's also in Inland Empire. So because I love Twin Peaks and Inland Empire and, you know, so that actress being in this movie gives me, gives it a thumbs up. She doesn't really do much, but she's like the psychiatrist basically for him. Because at the beginning, um, well, in the first one, some of the main characters are the cop. The original cop that was going after the serial killer and the boy and his mother basically and uh, so at the end of the movie we find out that the boy and his mother like went to psychiatric homes sadly we never get to really see the mother again the boy ends up going to a foster parents and these foster parents have another foster kid a girl and uh, her name is Kyle, which is kind of strange for a girl's name. But uh, anyway, um, Chucky ends up coming back. We start off like in the toy factory and they want to cover up like everything that happened. So they don't have like a bad name for their company. And they just want to get rid of all this mess. Like nobody believes it was really a killer doll or whatever. I don't know. But they actually, they kept the killer doll. They have it, the remains of it. And... Somehow there's, like, still blood in it or something. Well, somehow somehow it gets, like, electrified. And it electrocutes a guy. That's, like, the first kill in the movie, I think, is a guy getting electrocuted. So I think it's somehow, like, the electricity brings him back to life. I don't know. Pretty lame explanation, but... You know, this movie has a lot more characters, but they're just there to die. And um, there's, like, the, the psychiatrist for the kid... Andy and there's the the foster parents and there's the teacher and there's one of the guys that works at the toy factory and so it just feels like we're just starting off from where the first one left off to where it's the you know Chucky's trying to get to the boy and they're trying to kill Chucky and like that's kind of like what this whole movie is but there's a lot more kills in this I don't know how I feel about this movie I thought about it a lot and, you know, I wasn't directly paying attention to everything. I was kind of playing in the background, but I was paying attention at the same time. So there's a lot of good things and a lot of bad things about this movie. I think the story and stuff is definitely lacking. And, you know, that was what was interesting about the first movie. 
it had a lot more weight to it. And another thing that creeped me out about the first movie was when he goes and meets his old voodoo buddy, and they have, like, the voodoo doll, and he, like, breaks his arms and stuff. Like, that really creeped me out. There's a lot of facial expressions on Chucky in the second one, and I know there was some in the first, but I feel like maybe there's a lot more in this one. Maybe they're worse in this one. I didn't really like them. I don't know why. And I like practical effects, and I like, you know, the animation and stuff. Um, but I just, I don't know, I just don't like some of his facial expressions. It's like, it looks like clay or something, and it just kind of brings me out of it a little bit. I also didn't really like how he used, um, like, jump ropes to tie up people at least a couple of times. One, like the toy, the toy factory guy or whatever, at the beginning, he ties his hands behind the, his car seat with jump rope. And it's like the kids' jump ropes, you know, they have those, like, bright colored handles or whatever. And I get it, like, he's a doll, and they're kind of going with this theme to use different stuff. And maybe it was in the guy's car because he worked at a toy place or whatever. I don't know. But, and then he suffocates the guy with the bag, basically. He first threatens to shoot him with a gun, but it turns out to be a water gun. But then he strangles him with the bag, suffocates him. Um, but then later on he ties Andy to the bed with, like, the jump rope things. <laughs> and I'm like, why couldn't it just be regular rope? I mean, the guy is supposed to be, like, a serial killer trapped in a doll's body. Like, why does he care to use this stuff? Now, one thing that's interesting is that when Andy goes to his foster parents' home, he opens the closet and, like, a, another good guy doll comes out that looks like Chucky, so it scares him. And maybe they explained it, maybe I didn't catch it, but it's like, why in the hell, if there was a kid, like, traumatized by this doll, why in the hell would you have one of these in the house? Like, maybe it was left over from the other kids and they forgot or something, I don't remember. Maybe they explained that, but... Anyways, Chucky actually confronts this other doll <laughs> later on. Um, I think he's trying to sneak in the house or something, and the doll, like, goes off and says, like, hi, like, I'm your friend or something, and he's like, shut he's like... The doll's like, hi, I'm Tommy, or something, and he's like, shut up, Tommy, and, like, punches him, something, and, uh, knocks him down, and then, like, the Tommy thing's, like, broken, and it's like, I like hugs, I like hugs, I like hugs, or something like that, and, uh, Chucky's like, all right, well, hug this, and he grabs, like, this porcelain statue thing that they're looking at earlier, and he, like, crushes the skull of this doll, which, that's funny, I thought that was cool, but, um, but then he buries, like, the doll that he kills, and again, it's like, okay, he's a serial killer inside the doll's body, like, why would he care to, why is he acting like he kind of has a, you know, sorrow for this or something, why, or, maybe he buried it to get rid of it, you know, I just realized that, maybe he just buried it to, so they would think that he's the Tommy doll, okay, that makes sense, okay, he got rid of the other doll, okay. But the way that he buried it, it makes it seem like he gave it, like, a funeral because he killed his... Maybe it's supposed to be, like, kind of, like, both ways. Like, now that I think about it, that makes a little more sense. But, yeah, I just don't think there's a lot of story. And there's the final confrontation where they go to the toy factory and there's stuff there. And it's like, how many times does it take to kill Chucky? Like, I know they did it in the first one, too. He got set on fire and then he still came back and everything. And this one, like, they mess him all up and get, like, different parts attached to him, and, get, like, his legs get ripped off, and, but then, like, they melt him with, like, acid, but then he still comes back, and it's like, man, um, and, you know, I was thinking about how Chucky's, like, this little killer, and I was thinking about how I watched The Brood recently, and it has, like, the dwarf killers in The Brood, and they seem a lot more vicious than him. Of course, Chucky's supposed to be, like, the cool slasher killer kind of like freddy krueger he has all the one-liners and stuff and it's like oh it's a cute evil doll that's saying curse words and whatever and it's like oh isn't that edgy or funny or whatever um man there's just so much i feel like i could say about this because i just i still don't know how i feel about it really i think that i like the first one a lot better I think that this movie feels a lot more hollow. Um, I know they tried to up, like, the kill count. And... 
And one of the, the kills in the end is when a guy gets, like, his eyes replaced by a doll's eyes. Like, they come down, there's, like, all these machines making the dolls, and they put his eyes in there. We see a Chucky doll without eyes in the beginning, which is kind of creepy, seeing that doll without the eyes in it. Um, you know, in the, in the first one, part of the story is that, like, the kid knows that, like, Chucky's the killer, and, like, nobody believes him. Like, his mom doesn't believe him, and the police don't believe him, or whatever. But, in this one, they kind of try to go with the same theme, but it's just, like, not the same. That Kyle character, the girl, like, him, him and her are basically the main characters that make it through all this. And, you know, she's alright, but I don't know if she really adds that much to it. I think there's just so much more depth in the original. With the with the police officer and the mother. And him visiting his old voodoo buddy and all that. So, hmm. There's probably other stuff that I should say about it. There's not really much to talk about on the case because... It's a collection of the movies. They do have a Blu-ray collection with pretty much all of them, except for the remake, I think. And I'm interested in getting that at some point. I mean, I think this movie's all right. I'd definitely watch it again. I'd watch it right now, but I just don't feel like I really got a whole lot out of it. Um, I do think that the original one does have some creepiness to it. I don't know that this one really does. This is more of like the action, ramped up, child's play. Um, hmm. that scene where he's carrying the ruler and he's like, he's knocked down the teacher and he's like, you've been bad or whatever. And he's slapping the ruler in his hand. I don't really like the animation in that either. It's all right, I guess, but. Hmm. I should have thought of more of what I was going to say about this. <sighs> Just, I don't know. I gotta watch the third one, see what that's like. But yeah, I mean, it's a movie you can just pop in and shut your brain off. It's Chucky killing people, whatever. It just doesn't have the charm that the original does. But then to compare it to some of the other ones, like Bride of Chucky and stuff, I mean... Probably to some extent I would prefer the original trilogy because they at least kept the main kid actor. Um, you know, he seems like important in the movie. <sighs> yeah, I'm just stalling here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It is what it is. It's a Chucky movie. What can you ask for, really? What can you expect? I mean, watching a lot of these other movies, I feel like it's a little bit of a step down. Especially, I mean, even, like, from The Mangler. But, hmm... You know, another thing that I w thought that I should look into sometime is how child actors play in, like, horror movies. That's kind of interesting. I've read that some sometimes they, re they don't know, like, they're in a horror movie and they record scenes, like, without the villains or whatever, and they add them in. And It's like, how do these kids act in these movies when they're not even, like, old enough to watch them? Like, if they were, they couldn't even, like, rent it, like, without a parent or whatever. Um, that's kind of interesting, too. Hmm. Well, no reason to install it like this, but, yeah. Yeah, there ain't really much to say here. Oh, Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. All right, guys, that's going to be it. So that's movie number 12. See you later.